I have an article on uh, <laughs> on supply of grace on uh, it's, it's called precept upon precept is about drunk priests. <laughs> And uh, when we did the hermeneutical series, oh, man, I think maybe that was the beginning of the year, maybe in January. Uh, we did a, I did a sermon on this, and this is a condensed version of the notes from that sermon uh, th that was greatly rewritten. And, um, yeah, this passage that we are all familiar with, Isaiah 28.10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And we hear that quoted often as being somehow the model of exegesis and teaching. Um, yeah, but if you study the chapter in the context, what that verse is, that verse is about people making fun of the priests for being so drunk, their messages were terrible. It was as if it was as if they are talking to babies. That's what that's about. And what those concepts are about is how to teach babies. Here a little, there a little. I mean, where, where in the Bible do you see Paul exemplifying here a little, there a little in terms of truth? When you read the book of Romans, do you see truth only here a little, there a little? <laughs> no, that's how you teach babies. You just give them a little bit of a little bit of knowledge and as much as they can take until they're ready again later. And uh, that's how you teach babies. And what this passage is actually about are the people making fun of the priest. They, they, in Ephraim, the, the valley and the soil was so rich, uh, they developed the best wine. And they ended up getting all puffed up about the quality of their products, and they got drunk off their own wine, and they all became alcoholics, basically. And the priests in the synagogue, I mean, the, the tables were stained from the vomit. The condition was so bad. They had stammering lips, all this stuff. And that's the context to Isaiah 28.10. Um, so this is a deep dive. You might find it interesting. My favorite part of this study was the consequence. The, ver the chapter would later talk about the consequence of the priests. The priests are, are teaching so poorly. They have dumbed it, everything down to the most base elements, the most basic elements. Instead of teaching the law, they just get up there and say, oh, you'll be happy and find peace obeying the law. And that was it. And they became the laughing stock of Israel, and they became a source of ridicule through these songs. But there was a consequence to the, to the priests failing behind the pulpit. And that was the thing that really, for me, just nailed this whole study here. Yes, it's a deep dive here. I know there's a lot of, a lot of words here, but it's good. But, you know, it's, it's a pretty good read. Uh, and I want to just focus on this one part here, the inevitable result. What was the result of the priest preaching so poorly? Everything is so basic. The verse would tell us, verse 12 would tell us that they, yet they would not hear. So the dumbing down of sermons, the dumbing down of speech, the dumbing down of con doctrine, the dumbing down of the word of God actually has consequences. And the consequence of all of this that was taking place was that the people stopped listening. They stopped listening to the, to the, to the priests. They stopped listening to them teaching out of the word of God, stopped paying attention to the word of God. And in verse 13, it says, but the word of God was unto them. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here little, there little. You see what the Lord is saying there? Because the teaching was weak, the people began to view the Word of God as a weak book. Because the priests were only capable of talking to the people like children, the people began to view the Word of God as a children's book. 
because the priests, when they taught, failed to illuminate the people about the depths of the Word of God. The people began to view the Word of God as a book that had no depth. The failure of the priests subverted the way the people viewed the Word of God. And what was the outcome of all that insanity that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken? God allowed all of this to happen because he's basically letting them reap what they're sowing. When the teaching in Israel became weak, the people lost respect for the word of God. And when the teaching became so dumbed down and so repetitive as to be downright childish and offensive to adults, the people just stopped listening. And they only went to the synagogues because they had to, because it was the law, and they had to keep up appearances. The word wasn't having any effect anymore on their lives because of this. They weren't being convicted about anything. They weren't being inspired by stories of faith. They weren't learning about God or the law, which was important considering the fact that the Jews were in that covenant relationship with God under the if-then principle. The priests had become so incompetent and the word of God so stripped of all its power. The people... They just showed their faces, and then after church was over, they went home and ridiculed the priests for how terrible they were teaching. And when the people stop listening to the Word of God, they're done. They're done. That's the end of civilization. When the people have lost respect for the Word of God, the consequence is that they will all fall into sin and disobedience. They will plummet into physical, moral, and spiritual ruin, which means God's judgment for them is going to be right around the corner. It was nothing for God to you know, influence the Assyrians to take all these Jews captive because their drinking and their spiritual bankruptcy made them easy prey for the predators. And the message behind all the all this stuff in Isaiah 28, the big picture message of it all is the death of mature Intelligent, biblical exegesis is nothing less than the death of society. 